Yo, what's up everybody? My name is Kita and this is Psychopath Exposure. But you already knew that, so why don't we just get straight to the point, shall we? Uh, today's video is gonna be about how to establish boundaries with a narcissist, with a psychopath. When you're entangled with a toxic predator, such as a narcissistic um, piece of garbage, how do we establish boundaries while we're still in that relationship so that we can heal enough or get strong enough to discard them before they discard us or discard them before they discard you because I'm not dating a narcissist anymore. Um, rejoice if you're not either. Um, okay, so um, here's the thing. Boundaries is something that is easier said than done. It's like Mike Tyson used to say, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth, right? So, you know, you think you have healthy boundaries, your relationship is good, you're like, yeah, everything's under control, they don't disrespect me, you know, we have a few, we bicker here and there, but everything's good, there's no, there's no disrespect, there's no infidelity, there's nothing of, of the sort, until it starts happening. <sighs> Once it starts happening, and you, you're a little bit attached to that relationship or to that person, a lot of times you're attached to the sex. A lot of times you're attached to the intimacy, okay? And you feel that there's no one else out there that's gonna know your spots, it's gonna make you feel as safe or as turned on or whatever. And believe me, you get attached to that intimacy and it starts become, it's. It's like a drug. It starts becoming almost like a, a, a drug withdrawal when it starts being taken away from you, when it starts, when the psychopath withholds intimacy from you, okay? And that's when the boundaries go out the window, when they start abusing you, when they start cheating on you, when they start lying to you, and you know they're lying, and you catch them on the lies, right? And you bring it to the attention, and then they gaslight you, and they make you feel like you're crazy and that what you're telling them happened and the evidence you're showing them is not true, is false and that you're not reading the information correctly or they just dismiss you altogether, they cut communication, they give you the silent treatment, okay? Because the narcissists love giving you the silent treatment, okay? Um, and let's not confuse the silent treatment to when you're actually mad at somebody and you're like, I don't want to talk to you for the rest of the day. And you know, that happens even in healthy relationships. That actually happens all the time. And then, you know, both parties calm down and then they come back together. There's a little makeup sex, you know, a little makeup dinner. And you tell each other you guys love each other. And you feel this a, a genuine desire, you know, to fix whatever little battle you had. But when you're dealing with a narcissist, okay, or a toxic person, that silent treatment is to punish you, okay? That silent treatment is to punish you. And do not doubt that they're not fucking around with their new supply right now as they're giving you the silent treatment. If you think they're home, working on their business, studying, working on their career, you know, they tell you they just need space and then they don't talk to you for two or three months, you know? Some shit's going on. Some shit's going on. Okay, there's no reason why you're in a relationship with somebody and they just don't return your calls and just disappear and then act like nothing has happened after a significant amount of time. Um, and if you take that person back, where are your boundaries? Okay, where are your boundaries? Are you afraid of being alone? Is that it? I know that's it. I know that's it. Okay, and let me tell you, there's 7.5 billion people in the world. And if you let the universe run its course, you will meet a lot of new people, a lot of new people. But you have to let that happen. You need to trust in the process. And that's not gonna happen if you continue letting a psychopath or a narcissist or a toxic person continue to walk all over your boundaries. Okay, let me give you an example of what a non-boundary is, okay? Uh, or a weak boundary. A weak boundary is telling your abuser, hey, don't speak to me that way. And they tell you, oh, yo, sorry, 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 whatever. And then they go, first of all, they, sometimes they don't even apologize, but you know, they give you the impression that they're not gonna do it again. And then the very next day, 
they do it again. And you're like, I just, I just told you I don't like when you call me that. And they do it again, okay? Or you're, in, you're, you're out with friends and they tell a story that's very embarrassing to you. And they think it's funny and they love telling that story because they get a laugh out of, out of the crowd at your expense. So you call them out on it and you're like, hey, can you please not share? That's an intimate detail. Like I, I shared that with you in confidence. And you fucking went ahead and you told everybody. Like, first of all, that's already a red flag. Even in a friendship, that's a red flag. Okay? I wouldn't, I wouldn't stay friends with somebody that would disrespect me like that. Okay? And betray my trust like that. I wouldn't. And I cut people out quick. Okay? I cut people out quick. Um, hopefully, you're going to start doing that soon as you grow in strength, right? Um, if you stay friends with that person, okay? Let's say you give them a chance because everybody makes mistakes. And they go ahead and they do the same thing again. Your boundary, your weak boundary just got demolished. And now you're what? You're building a boundary further back. Like, okay, I'll forgive you again. I'll forgive you again, right? How much are you going to forgive them? They're, they don't respect you. They don't care. They don't care. They're incapable of loving you. They're incapable of getting in touch with your feelings. They don't have any empathy. Narcissists do not have any empathy, okay? They're incapable of feeling those human emotions. They don't have that connection. It's all about them, okay? So putting you down at their expense is, is narcissistic supply. They love it. They love it. So you gotta, you gotta have those boundaries and just know it's like, no, wait a minute. Motherfucker, this is a deal breaker. And just know this is a fucking deal breaker. And when it happens, own it and just tell yourself, God, or whatever you believe in, please give me the strength, okay, to let this person go. I trust that there's someone better for you because the reason this is happening is because this person is not the person for you, okay? This is not the person for you. Now, some people might argue, well, if you're a toxic person and you're dating a toxic person, you deserve each other, okay, to a certain extent. I always tell people, a victim needs a shooter, shooter needs a victim, okay? And that's pretty much self-explanatory. So um, a narcissist needs a codependent or it needs um, their version of their of prey, because remember, they're predators, so they need their prey. They need someone that's going to put up with their abusive behavior, um, somebody that's going to walk into their traps easier than someone that has stronger boundaries. And let me remind you guys, even people with strong boundaries that are very successful and, and meet a lot of people and have great social circles and connections, they, they can still fall prey to narcissistic abuse. I've seen it, I've experienced it, it's, it's crazy. These people know how to infiltrate your mind like a snake and say the right things, push the right buttons, and you watch people with empires just crumble, okay? Read up on Cleopatra. Read up on Cleopatra and what she used to do, okay? So, uh, yeah, it's all about just trusting that you have those boundaries and those boundaries are to protect your integrity, to protect your soul, to protect what, you know, your self-worth. And that's the problem right there. If you ain't got any self-worth, right, you're going to let these motherfuckers just knock you out and you're going to keep taking them back. And you're going to apologize. You're going to apologize to the narcissist because your face ran into their fist. I laugh, but it's not funny. I laugh, but <laughs> I'm still laughing. But it's not, it, it's, it's, it's sad. It's pathetic. And when you get out of the situation, when you finally heal and you get out of the situation, you look back and you're like, wow, I can't believe I put up with that. I can't believe I put up with that. What kind of boundaries did I have? What type of person did I feel I was inside? Okay? And it's like, okay, wait a second. First of all, I was scammed by a narcissist, okay, by a scam artist. So it wasn't my fault. But now that I know this shit, you know, once, once I read the books and I watched the videos and I talked to people and I kept taking them back, I executed no contact for a week. I felt great. I felt better, I felt empowered, and then I decided to let them back into my life because I thought, hey, maybe they'll change this time. How did that work out for you? Hmm? How did that work out for you? A leopard doesn't change its spots, okay? It's not gonna happen. This is what narcissists do. This is what toxic people do, okay? They seek and they destroy, okay? So let's start working on those boundaries 
to start enforcing those boundaries, okay, we can start we can start practicing with our friends and with our family, hopefully not narcissistic friends and family, okay? Where they do something, you can just call them out and tell them, hey, hey, you know what? I don't like when you say this way. I don't like when you treat me this way. And I know, you know, it's cool. I know we, we've had that dynamic for a long time, but I'm not in that place anymore. So I would appreciate it, you know, if you don't say that or if you don't treat me that way, you don't speak to me that way. And see how they respond. If they're mature adults, they'll be like, oh my God, like, I'm ter terribly sorry, like, I had no idea, like, we've been friends for a long time, sorry, like, I get it, no problem. You don't have to worry about that. That's a mature adult, that's a healthy person, that's a healthy friendship. But if this person gives you shit about it, like, oh, grow some thicker skin, like, oh, you pussy, they start talking to you like that, and they keep walking over those boundaries, then this is a toxic friendship, and you have to cut them out. And that's how you can test how strong your boundaries are okay that's how you're gonna test your boundaries are and you know there's a lot of manipulative people that manipulate you into staying in in that friendship and that also is a it's an abuse of your boundaries in and of itself if you have a falling out with someone and all of a sudden they start telling they start texting you and calling you with some crazy stories like you know that start making you feel guilty I don't know, it's a little manipulative in my, in my opinion, at least from my experience. It's kind of like, just, just talk about what's going on, but don't, 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 don't start with some dramatic story just to hope to get a, uh, a response for you. Narcissists do this all the time. Like if you're going no contact, for instance, a narcissist would, after a week, they'll send you some bizarre text. Okay, like, oh my God, like I, I'm, I'm gonna kill myself and I'm feeling, I'm feeling suicidal, blah, 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 blah. So then you, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, I, I better call them and rescue them. And then you call them and then um, they're with another girl, with another dude, and they, they, they continue the abusive behavior and you fell for it again. And you fell for that shit again, right? If it's happened to you, okay, share your story in the comments so you can see that this is proof. This happens to all of us, okay? But practice those boundaries on, on, on friendships and see if you can pinpoint what friendships you have right now that are toxic, friends that you shouldn't have in your life anymore, okay? And that's how you baby step your way into creating and establishing strong boundaries with a narcissistic predator, with toxic people, psychopaths, and the whole bunch of disordered pieces of shits. So I hope this helps, guys. If you'd like to work directly with me, you can always reach me at info at psychopathexposure.com or click the link below in the description where you can get more details on how, we, on how we can work together privately through one on one mentoring coaching calls. Also, don't forget to pick up my free ebook on the five steps of going no contact with a psychopath narcissist. Download that straight to your phone and read it over as much as you can until you can memorize the action steps necessary that you're gonna have to implement if you wanna get these toxic predators out of your life, okay? Hope you guys are doing well. Remember to subscribe to the channel, drop a like on the video if you liked it, and uh, share your story in the comments below so uh, we can continue growing the community. I appreciate you guys, love you guys. I love the strength, I love the growth, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.